I've been meaning to watch this for a minute. So let's see the journey of fentanyl through America. Black Cartel, TNA Poder, and Este Lado de Frontera. Wait, is he in America? So what's the most you ever made in a week doing this? I've made 100,000. In a week? In one day. What? Fentanyl is a synthetic opioid that is 50 times stronger than heroin and 100 times stronger than morphine. Fentanyl is often included in other street drugs like cocaine. Yo, I, I watched a video about how a new drug drop chat is worse than fentanyl. <laughs> They, they like tested it in the 1950s and they thought it was so destructive, they stopped testing on this drug and then picked up the testing. Yeah, it's some drug from China, I forgot what it's called. It's, it's, it's I like, how do, how do you get crazier than fentanyl? I was watching this YouTuber, it's this older black guy. He makes like bodybuilding slash science videos. He made a video on it. I, I don't know what his name is, but his always shows up on my homepage. It makes the drugs cheaper, more potent, addictive, and dangerous. Users of these different street drugs usually are not aware that fentanyl is in the substance that they are buying. Crazy. Why <laughs> this Louis Vuitton bags right there? Nah. Hello, I'm Tommy G. I'm a documentary filmmaker, and I spend much of my time diving into the underworld. Today, we take a look into the world of drugs and drug overdoses. America has more drug overdoses than any country on Earth. What? Where's Canada? Where's Canada? By a lot. For the last few decades, we could point to crack, heroin, and meth as the usual suspects in this overdose tragedy. But in the last few years, a new drug has entered the scene to devastating effect, fentanyl. Americans ages 18 to 45, the leading cause of death now isn't a car crash or a heart attack, it's a fentanyl overdose. This is the single deadliest drug threat our nation has ever faced. Fentanyl overdoses kill more than wow. 150 people each day. Investigators see- Wow, shit makes Oxy look like child's play. This Oxy right here, wow. Ever faced. Fentanyl overdoses kill more than 150 people each day. Investigators seized nearly 35,000 fentanyl pills, more than $300,000 in cash, and a number of guns and vehicles. 300,000 fentanyl pills and 11 pounds of fentanyl powder vacuum sealed and stuffed inside the gas tank of an SUV. Deputies in Alabama raced to save a one year old who allegedly was overdosing on fentanyl. Fentanyl killed over 73,000 people. Those parents need to be stoned, bro. The parents of that child need to be stoned to death. They need to get 5,000 lashes so their body could barely operate and they need to be stoned in GTA. In 2022, making it by far the most fatal drug in our country. As far as I can tell, there are a few main reasons contributing to the rise of fentanyl. First, the supply. There seem to be no consequences for the Chinese manufacturers making the drug and their Mexican cartel business partners have been wildly successful at taking advantage of our poorly defended borders. The next issue we face is how much of our illegal drug supply is now being cut with fentanyl. In the drug dealer world, this is referred to as being stomped on. After speaking with many drug dealers, I found that most most dealers have no idea how much of their product has fentanyl cut into it. Lastly, it takes an insanely small dose of fentanyl to kill somebody. It's been Whoa. reported that as little as two milligrams are a fatal dose. That's Whoa. as big as a few grains of salt. The main focus of this documentary Whoa. will be coming to understand fentanyl's journey to and through America. How it starts in China, Whoa. how it goes through Mexico, the process of smuggling it across the border. It was narcotics stuffed inside a car engine that somehow was still running. How local dealers move it, how it makes its way across the country through our very own postal service, and finally, the devastation it's causing in cities across the country. Folks, this is the journey of fentanyl through America. Yo, honestly, chat, this is why I think I'd rather live in a city than in rural areas. Because in my experience, rural areas, they have less things to entertain themselves with. And I feel like sometimes they just use drugs as entertainment. Feel me? And at least in a city, like you have things like movie theaters and, you know, things to distract yourself with. That's why I genuinely feel like distractions are useful. Not too much distraction. Like you shouldn't be like, you shouldn't be watching YouTube videos all day. But if you have no distractions, I know so many people that just turn to drugs. And even in the area I grew up in, we had we at least had things to do. There was areas a little bit further out from us that had, didn't have shit. And all them niggas was drug addicts. We used to make fun of them. When, when we would play them in basketball or some shit like that. We were like, you drug addict ass niggas. Fuck out of here, nigga. <laughs> like we would just bully them. Because 
Like that's, but that was the brand of the whole area. All they did was drugs because they didn't have nothing else to do in that area. Me personally, I grew up playing basketball and video games, man. Um, I don't know what niggas be doing nowadays. We head to the border town of Nogales, where we speak to a fentanyl dealer that can give us the ins and outs of how the drug- What area? So I spent most of my life growing up in Markham, and uh, Markham quickly became a, a pretty decently sized city because all the Chinese niggas moved in. But then there's an area right outside Markham in Toronto called Stouffville, which is a little further north. And back when I was growing up, Stouffville was brand new, and all them niggas was drug addicts, bro. All of them. We used to make fun of those niggas a lot. Drug now, now I think Stouffville's a, a busier area. And there's probably another area that's spawning north of Stouffville that's something else. I don't, I don't know what it is. I lost track. Bungled across the border. Here's what we learned. These cars have been impounded by Border Patrol, and they're giving you a warning that there's fentanyl within these cars right now. Yeah, me too. Thank you, no more. Mi primera pregunta is, ¿qué son las maneras o rutas que fentanyl llega a América? Pues ven las chaquetas aquí. This dealer seemed really paranoid about Mexican cartel members wanting to snipe us or shoot us across the border. I don't what? know how much of it was nonsense, what? but he was getting me paranoid too. I'm a little nervous right now. I'm going to ask him about this, but there's snipers or shooters. Border Patrol warned us. Like, guys in the South Side, they don't, they don't give a shit about your channel. They want to make money. So if you're in their way, we're not crossing. Okay. <laughs> Hey, W cop! <laughs> I'm a bit nervous. Okay, that pulled in. Cuando fuimos caminando, sientes ojos en, en nos? Todo el mundo te está mirando. Todo el mundo está trabajando ahorita la, con la frontera. Como viste, está caliente ahorita. La cartel tiene poder en este lado de frontera. Por Por todos lados está Chicago, Chicago, Nueva York tienen poder por todos lados. Ellos tienen Damn. el poder a uh, asesinato en Estados Unidos. Sí, te pueden, tirar, pueden tirar balazos por la fence donde estábamos parados y tú pueden tirar balazos por ahí. El primero ruta que Fetna viene a Estados Unidos es por hombres que caminantes sí. son los otras maneras si no a veces cruzan por el río grande ahí también pueden cruzar por la frontera con el carro ellos fue capturaron agarraron ese carro uh, como por, puedes ver policía border patrol sí. que piensas sobre esto no pues nomás agarraron uno van a ver más tumban uno van a pasar diez piensas que tienes un trabajo nervioso Sí, mucho nervioso aquí hay mucha mucha gente de la frontera aquí mucho border patrol policías entonces todo el mundo se pone nervioso qué es la castigada si bro, bro i i get nervous fucking crossing the border and i'm a fucking civilian i don't even have shit wrong i just don't know if someone's gonna want a fucking power trip while i'm there bro i can't even imagine niggas moving with like drugs i put them in jail for life fucking i'm panic man I can't even hold that in, bro. <laughs> I'm not even a nervous nigga, but I panic. Who is that caught? Pues a uno lo mete por años. Depende, 20 años, 15 años. Depende de la persona que agarra, en con qué te agarra. Todo depende. Ahorita hay mucho, mucho demanda ahorita para los azules. Todo el mundo lo quiere en Chicago, Nueva York. Los precios What's blues? What is that? Para este trabajo necesita comunicar mucho con el cartel. Sí, mucho se tiene que comunicar. Por eso cargan radio, no cell phones, nada de eso. Tengo mucho miedo cuando... You bring coke with you, that's why. Blues is fent. Bro, I don't do coke. And uh, uh, they call it blues. You got a nickname now? Pienso sobre cartel. ¿Qué es para tú? El cartel no es mal. El cartel no más quiere ayudar gente. No más queremos darle a comer a nuestra familia. Es todo. Yeah, Hay muchas ciudades en Estados Unidos que son afectan sobre los azules. ¿Qué sientes sobre esto? No tienes que sentir como si nada. Si más es trabajo, nos pagan y es todo. ¿Es peligroso para tú uh, hablar conmigo? Sí, es muy peligroso. Ahorita pueden tirar balazos de ahí, de la frontera por acá. Es la verdad que millones de azules entran a la frontera todo el día. Millones de pastillas pasan por la frontera, por carros, por venas, de todo. Es la droga más popular a vender, like heroin nada más, crack nada más. Fentanyl es número uno, 
Students on the number one ahorita. It's just interesting to hear it from the dealer perspective because everyone plays a little chain in the store. There's the Chinese chemist, there's the cargo ship operator that brings it over here, there's the guy at the port, there's the guy in the cartel that, hey, if he doesn't do it, maybe they get his family. There's a guy that brings it to the border, there's a guy that crosses the border, there's a guy that sells it into the border, and it somehow ends up in the hands of the addict. We just talked to a guy that gets it over the border, now we're gonna talk to a local dealer and see the differences in the game there. Bro, how the fuck you feel? Tommy, how do you find these people? Bro, how do you find how do you find drug dealers and local dealers? How do you find niggas willing to talk to you, bro? Cause it's a risk for them. All he needs to do is fuck up on one frame of a blur. GG's. <laughs> GG's. You gotta be real. Yo, you can't fuck up the edit. I wanted all. to see how local street dealers were interacting with fentanyl. So we went to Tucson, Arizona at a very sketchy motel to hear it from the dealers themselves. Here's what they said. Bro, I'm not gonna lie. Arizona's looking crazy tomorrow. I watch these videos. Oh my gosh. This place is sketch heaven, huh? America. How have you seen blues change the game? Yes. It was like $25, $30, like five, six years ago. Now that shit, $1, knocking everybody off. I got family members died from that shit. If I buy $1,000 worth of fentanyl, how much can I flip that for if I'm selling it piece by piece? And then how much you get your thousand pills for? Times that by the dollar, I mean, a dollar times a thousand pills. What's up here, G? I see people bang out two pills at a time. So it's like you figure, they get dope shit every man, hour or so. Say they're doing at least one to two pills every hour to two hours. As soon as they go to sleep, they don't nod out, but they don't really go to sleep. They come back up right, right away, they don't come back up, they don't be warm. That's so People sad, dog. Like they be not at all. They be like this, they don't be sleep, you know what I mean? They'll be like that, but they'll be awake. We got a presidential election coming up in 2024. Do you think the border and fentanyl should be at the top of the list for priorities for the next president? These people want it, so it's gonna come down to the people. It don't matter who you vote for, but it's sober. It's not coming down to the people, bro. Humans, you're biologically built away. You're designed to want to fuck. You're designed to want to eat. You're designed to want to survive. Those are biological. You can't blame niggas. Bro, you can't blame the people. You can't, you can't blame the people, bro. You can't, dog. Especially because their shit is being laced with the substance. And then now they have a desire for the substance. Like, it is completely... It is like a Trojan horse being used to sabotage their bodies and to fry their minds. How could that be the people's fault? Their kids too that dog the shit when they come to the hood and then they just, it's too much because their body's not immune to that so they don't react the same. You feel me? Corner of one pill can be, huh? Get to the very end of that pill? That's the part that you Now if you're popping the whole thing, you're putting it in your body all at once. Now if you're smoking, you do a little and you chill. A little and you chill. It's not a whole just boom. That's what's f***ing these people, it's because these kids is popping them. You got to know that. You know what I'm saying? I don't really know, baby. Why? Why, why, why? You got to feel bad for a customer. I can't speak personally on that, but it's none of my business. Dog, that shit had people by the ball. Like, it had a whole different person out of character. It's like, going against family, going against loyalty, going against their morals. You can't help but to lose respect, dog. That shit's hard not to. Like, I know it ain't a damn thing that I do, so make them stop. That's their choice, you know what I mean? Yeah, so I know they put it today, man. So if you were the U.S. You know what? You know what bothers me? It's like, the, the easy, short-term, fun decisions are so easy to make, especially in America. And then the satisfying, gratifying, purpose-filled decisions are very challenging. It's so it's way easier to eat bad than to eat healthy. It's like there's more degenerate things to do than healthy things to do. That's just the way it is. So the making healthy decisions becomes a lot harder when the fucked up shit is way easier to do all the time. All the time, bro. And it's expensive too. President, would you put pressure on China to say, hey, Cut down on that shipping manufacturing mm -hmm. in your country. I'm like a conspiracy theorist. Oh, yeah, me too. I don't believe that. I think they're gonna stop this big deal. You think it's being made here? Oh, no, I don't. I don't think it's not being made here. I don't think there's no stopping it now. Not everybody wants to pay it. Who knows the government ain't in on it, too? Where do you guys view yourself on the scale of good and evil? Part of good. All right. I'm good. I'm good. We're gonna take you guys to the next part of this journey in this fentanyl world. We hit the road to Phoenix to revisit The Zone. The Zone was one of the biggest homeless camps in America, but it recently got cleaned up by local law enforcement and the city after lots of angry Phoenix residents rallied together to get the homeless people off the streets. This is one of the hot spots of fentanyl in the country. 
Let's talk to the people on the street. Is it the Chinese guy that's making it? Is it the Mexican guy that's selling it? Is it the dealer? Is it the user? Chinese. Can you tell people a little about your story and how you ended up on the street? Man, I gave it to me when, when my wife passed away. How long ago was that? Man, I got out of prison about seven years ago. You got out of prison, your wife passed away. Yeah. Man. What's your drug of choice? Spice. Spice? What's that? That's a crazy one. What's I did that? spice now as a teenager. <laughs> How much does spice have it cost a day? About five dollars. There's people that they pay their taxes and they're mad that it Can't goes to uh, homelessness and, and addiction and drug addiction. What do you think about that? We work for it. Do you pay your taxes? How do you pay your taxes? By working. What do you do? A regular job. When did you notice that sweeping through the city or changing the city? Like four years ago, maybe. Do you think there should be harsher penalties for dealers? Do you think there should be more resources for the people? Well, I know McDonald's Sprite when I see it. Well, addicted to it. Resources for the people addicted to it. Have you had any loved ones or any family members oh, affected yeah. by fentanyl? A lot. And what is that like? That's horrible. Sad. I was an addict too, but... How did you shake it? Just going to rehab. Yeah. Do you know people that have died from fentanyl? Mm -hmm. Like probably like 30. 30 what? people? Yeah, a lot. How has it been being an employee where there's people <laughs> on fentanyl all the time? It's just kind of part of society. I don't know, it's pretty sad. How many years did this go back? Probably like the last five years. Yeah? How bad has it gotten? Really bad. The other day when I was going to the bathroom, there was like one of those pills on the floor and there's a little kid running around. It's just sad because he could have picked it up, you know? I'm just glad I found it before he did, you know? Bro! Bro! We met both of you about six, eight months ago. The zone was a completely different place. The blues is ruining America and it's ruining, like, and that's why I say that shit. F El Chapo, you feel me? Wait. Wait. Uh, seen this play out before. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> they should have released him though. He told him, y'all don't release me, I'm going to release the blue-eyed demon upon the world. They should have released him. The first time we visited the zone was back in early part of 2023. This was our first time getting to see what fentanyl was doing to a city, and we wanted to learn more, but we had no idea where to look. Luckily, we met a resident of the zone who went by Miss Lady, and when she heard we were asking about fentanyl, she went around the corner to her dealer and came back with a handful of fentanyl and crystal meth. Here's how that conversation went. I just buried my daughter last month. Because of that, no. From an accident of <laughs> They said when you smell popcorn, that's when the blue is lit. Sometimes. Do you right. know anyone that can show us what it looks like? What a blue looks like? Yeah. Mm. No, because ain't no one going to be brave enough. Yeah. Oh, there you go. That's, <laughs> that's it right there. She, she, she just capped at her mind. It was right beside her. You, so you can't say no ASAP. You got to see. You got to actually try. She didn't try hard enough. Yeah. Yeah. So that's it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And how do you t use like a? They pen? can smoke it. No, you can shoot shoot yourself. You can so that's enough it. to overdose on. Yes. And yeah. how much do they need to get? Right. One hit. Like how much is that? Though, like a tiny little crumble. Like a, like a. It costs up to thirty dollars. That Maybe. one pill is thirty dollars. Sometimes. And she might have got scammed. The last thing I said it was a dollar. <laughs> Not that that's the important fact in here in this uh, documentary. How long does that last, somebody? Like a five minutes. Okay, my daughter was a methamphetamine user. At Christmas, she told me that she wasn't getting high anymore off of the meth, so she switched to crack cocaine. Well, she got some bad shit. So on a Friday, she overdosed. It was laced with fentanyl. And that crack cocaine was laced mm. with fentanyl. I'm gonna take you guys to go contribute some fentanyl. That contributes the weird verb to use in this constant. Contribute fentanyl to what? Agent about to be off the pills, bro. This shit, I grew up scared of shit like this, chat. This is the reason why the most I'll ever do is some good old caffeine, chat. You can't, bro. You could say, Agent, I'll give you a million dollars to try this drug. My my mental is way more valuable than a million dollars. I love where I'm at mentally. It's way more valuable than any money anybody could give me. I'm not compromising that for no money. Fuck no. $100 million. <clears throat> bro, I'm so good mentally. I'm sharp. And I feel like now I'm healthier. Like, I'm, my brain is on point. That's not worth, there's no money worth sacrificing that for. Fuck no, fuck no. That all is for 20 bucks. Yeah, I have a hookup. This many pills can get your 
sucked. Are sucks a common currency around here? Um, I don't know your man. Any man wants to suck. So this is where I sleep at mostly, but it's just really an extra space for people that might need it, like coming through or just need a spot for the night. You welcome anybody or what? Yeah, pretty much. That's yeah, what... Have you ever said no to a guest? No. How long have you been here, ma'am? Eight months, I think. About as long as he's been here. What do you think of, of this place? It sucks. <laughs> How did it change? They wiped all the tents out, all the tents out, road by road. The city of Phoenix cleaned out the final block of the zone. There used to be over a thousand people in this area. Where have they wow. gone? Well, most of them shelter. A lot of them spread out through the city. Some of them still here. Different motels and shelters. Yeah. yeah. How come you guys haven't joined them? I was the last man standing. I just did, couldn't leave and be in a hotel with my friends here was still in, in tents. Wow. What impact has Fentanyl had on the city? Devastating. It's People the city's worst nightmare. I stopped, thank God, that I almost died from them to where now that was good enough for me not to do them no more. Do you guys have loved ones, friends, family that have died from fentanyl? Hey, that's your body? I do, yes. How many people do you think you've known that have died from fentanyl? Three here and one was relative. So who's to blame in this chain? There's the, the Chinese laboratory that makes them and there's the end user, the addict. Who is to blame in that chain? Ourselves. If your family watches this, is there any message you'd have to them? I'm okay. I don't like where I'm at, but this is what I'm living with right now, and this is where I'll be. Do you have kids? I do. I have two, 130 and 135. Is there anything in particular you'd say to them? I still love y'all. I'm sorry you have to see me like this, but it's just a choice that I've made. Hey. Damn, bro. Damn. Damn. Guys, like, um, the experience was awesome. I think everybody that was here or will be here, I think it's a choice that they made. I don't think anybody forced to be here, and I'm definitely not to my sons and, and to my um, my ex-wife and them that worry about me and care about me. The last place I had, there was a fire. Everything was burned, but the only thing was left, a Bible in a pocket with the Bible, was still working and undamaged. And that was a light in my key. And that gave me hope. They're supplying pipes to people. Pipes and syringes and everything else. It's a van, it pull up. So I don't understand that. How many motherfuckers gone because of that shit? I, I would believe. I would stay here too if I was an addict. The people that's here, they race to that van. The van here, the van here. Like my boyfriend been homeless since he's been 11 years old. His mom was a piece of shit. Wait, what? Wait, there's a van that provides syringes and things of that nature? Now, I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but if I was, I'd have some questions about the intents. When he came to the zone, like three years ago, he made a home for himself. Do you know what kind of childhood trauma he experienced? Abused by women. His mom used to let her own girls sexually abuse him and things like that. She'll make him go commit crimes so she can get money and stuff like that. Is there anyone, a specific person you have in mind that you would like to send a message to that might watch this? I want to send a message to my kid. All three of them, but it's not easy here. But I know that that fight, that I have to fight on my own. And when I get done, they will see my face. And for my auntie and my mama and Lexus, y'all can kiss my ass. I had a good mom. <laughs> my mom raised me in the church. She did a good job. I did wrong on my own. Yeah, I just went to jail because a friend of mine got shot and they took me to jail because they sent me and my boyfriend know who shot him and that's why I got an ankle monitor. Now I gotta go do four and a half years in prison. <laughs> you have to go do four and a half years? For a conspiracy years? theory on a murder and I didn't do it. <laughs> You're guaranteed going to prison? Oh yeah, but that's because my other charges sick. Last time we were here. Okay, oh shit, fuck me. This video just made me grateful. I'm not gonna lie to you. Lord have mercy. Joe's business was surrounded by people. So we're here to pay an old friend a visit and catch up with Joe, the sandwich shop owner. How are you doing? Good. Last time we were, we were here about eight months interviewing you and you, the place was surrounded. Right. What's changed since we last talked to you? The judge said, get out. And what do you think about that? See my smile? See <laughs> your smile? Yeah. I mean, come on. I really like my, to be safe. You know, to come to work and feel safe. Feel safe for my girls. But when I go shopping you know, and I leave, I want them to be safe. And there's some crazy people that are on, high on drugs. It's the least, there's hope and the least have been doing a great job. So no more people. Now they're just more spread right out front. though. That's gotta be a relief. It's What's a wrong? miracle. We're gonna tuck in and eat and we'll see you guys in the next part of this journey. Damn. How much does it cost a day to keep the blues going? 
I can do like 10 a day, but the more you smoke, the more serious it gets. The addiction gets stronger. And I have known certain people that could be sick up until 40 pills a day. That's a lot of pills. Yeah, and you think they're overdose, but you know, you, your body adjusts to it. How hard is it to find blues around here? It's not hard, but you gotta keep coming up with the money. How much does it cost for one dose, one hit? Well, right now it's starting to cost like $3 a pill. How long have you been doing fat now? Not that long, just a year maybe. By the city dropping off tin foil and pipes to people, do you think that's helping or hurting addicts? I think that it helps. Yeah? How so? Well, because you can maintain a certain amount of dignity with the cleanliness. I was very curious to see how fentanyl was making its way around the country. So I met with a dealer that went by the name The Postman to see how he was using the what? U.S. Postal Service to send thousands of fentanyl pills to cities all around the country. This is what he had to say. So I'm Tommy, I'm here with... So man, this is the postman, the local postman. One of the things that we're covering in this video is how fentanyl, the blue pill, makes it all around to American cities across the country. How many drugs do you think go through the post office every year? It's easy to get at least about a million pills through. It all depends on who you go to and who is going through. All right, let's see how this is done. So how long have you been in this business? Does it make you nervous? It gets me nervous, but you know, a lot of people do this. You know, a lot of this pays the bill, so you know, people gotta do it. So you need your box like this. Usually you put a towel. Basically, you put it in there like this. Am I bugging or box. would a towel not add like a lot of weight? Have boats. How much will you pick up and how much do you send through the mail? It depends on how many they need. These are a thousand. A thousand is a boat. A thousand pills? Yes, a thousand pills. So we can sell 5,000, 10,000. It all depends on the customer what they're trying to receive. So how much can you pick up a thousand pills for? You can get the pills anywhere from 900 for 5,000 to, you know, $6,000. It all depends who you are and where you're at. You're basically a wholesaler. Yes. You don't have to go to the individual little customers. You just go to another big dog in another city. Yep. And what do you flip it for? It depends where I'm at. If I'm in New York, it's out there, they're selling for $60 each. A pill? A pill, $60 each a pill. What? You can charge $10,000 for five of them. On the flip side, there's people that are out in the- Wait, the prices aren't making no sense. The last nigga said a dollar. Inflation is hitting crazy in, in New York, dog. The street, their whole life. One dollar at wholesale? How do you feel about that? How do you feel about your impact? We've talked to people out in the street. People don't want to quit. There's some people that rather do yeah. it. There's people yeah. that don't want to. There's some people that don't want to get no help. This is their way out. A lot of people say fentanyl's killing the streets. There's some people that'll tell you fentanyl's saving them. So do you have any sort of moral anxiety about what you do? No, not really. We got it in a safety deposit box. So you send the key separately? It depends. It's all on request. If the customer needs it, we will send the key. It's usually in the box. You can cover up the box. Just so it don't make no noise. Gets past the post office. Take it down to your local shampoo. It's just like Walmart. Whatever they order, you send it. Just like Bro, this. Bro, what the fuck <laughs> am I watching? Go ahead and close it up. I'm assuming you're not putting the dealer's address Bro, this thing, is, this thing is giving us the play-by-play -play on how to move drugs through the post office. No, no, we use different addresses, different names. If he feels comfortable like that, we'll send it to his address and now we'll get another address. Is the biggest thing standing in your way a dog? So much of this comes through the, through the border that I'm not worried about a dog. If they take one box, guess what? Ten boxes made it there. Do you know anything about the journey oh, of that? No, do you know nah. from starting in China to going through Mexico? Do you know anything about how it makes it through? Usually they're saying a lot of people get it from China just to throw the U.S. off, but like the way they make it in, in Mexico right now, they usually make it out in the fields, you know? So what's the most you ever made in a week doing this? I've made 100,000. In a week? In one day. Is Wait. <laughs> what's the net? Like, after expenses, though. Like, after you pay for everything, how, how much did you make that day? Is this through Cash App? Is this, how do you even get that kind of money? Sometimes they can fly out here, come see you in person. They can send you the money. They can mail you the money. It all depends how they want to do it. How long do you see yourself doing this for? A couple more times, you know, I'm trying to open up a lucrative business and get out of this, but... It sounds like you're looking at the way a local bar owner would work. If you serve the drinks, it's up to them what they want to do with them. And it's not necessarily your fault if they drink till they die or 
do the do the blues till they die. Is that kind of how you feel about it? Yeah, exactly. So if you could talk to the mother wow. of someone that's out in the streets and they're worried about their son who's on fentanyl, what would you say to that mother? I know a couple mothers that. that that's kids a really good fentanyl. question. It's not always about just selling it to them. Sometimes we try to help out too. But you know, some of these people they don't want to help. Man, they want to do this shit. So basically, they're not buying it from you. They'll buy it from someone else. Yeah, they're gonna buy it from somebody else. So I mean, might as well just go in my pocket. And you put the name and the address, you contact your customer, and it's on the way, buddy. Like, it's really hard to make money. So when you think that you can spend about a thousand, send this through the mail, I guess it's easy to see why people are into it. We're gonna make it to the next stop of this story. We'll see you guys in the next scene. Nigga! We head next to a city that's been particularly impacted by fentanyl. Baltimore. When you visit a city like this and talk to the dealers, talk to the people, you come to realize fentanyl is replacing Yo, this video is a movie! That's what the people are asking for. That's what the dealers are selling. But in Baltimore, they do something interesting. They mix the fentanyl with horse tranquilizer, making a drug called Trank. And that's where you see the people knotted out, swaying in the wind. It sort of makes a human zombie. Let's hit the streets and see it for ourselves. Baltimore. Its official motto is the charm city. But that can be hard to find. <laughs> Nigga hating ass broadcaster. Hey, hey, what kind of shit is that to say about a city, dog? Abuse litters this place. A decade ago, heroin was the main killer. Now it's the powerful synthetic substance, fentanyl. The reason I came out here was because I'm an addict. I'm originally from Carroll County, so it was easier to obtain. Fuck Carroll County, nigga! All my niggas hate Carroll County, bruh! That racist ass cop that pulled me over, that's where he's from. Paying drugs at a cheaper price. I was in treatment. I was living out Frederick at a place called Solid Ground. I was actually two years clean. I relapsed, so I came out here with the expectation to continue using. How and long ago was that that you relapsed? This was exactly April last year. Damn, man. I shoot up, right? Yeah. The only place I can actually go is in my neck. All my veins basically have collapsed or they don't work. Does it feel like a hole that's almost impossible to get out of? Oh, definitely. They're trying to like mask some kind of pain that they they're bearing. But for me, it was losing my two children. I lost them about seven years ago. What? I signed up my parental rights so they'd have a good life. And I'm glad I did because I ended up going to jail for two years, pretty much. I see you have different things on your skin. Is that from using? These are scars right here. But like right here, that's from Catch like up. from using drugs. How much money do you need a day to survive? I have a $12 a day habit. How many times a day do you use? Twice. I use right when I wake up in the morning. Usually I'll save something from the night previous. When you use, you stop feeling the, the euphoria from it, but you'll still get the call, meaning like you'll still feel that warm sensation. And it's just a temporary cushion of comfortability. What's the most common drugs to be found no. around here? Heroin and crack. How'd you get to here? Everybody that ends up here gets stranded here. So Wait, I remember her from another video. Feel stuck right now? Almost. How much money do I need to find drugs around here? I don't know. It's just if you can find them. I mean, not everybody's friendly. It's common. Is it dangerous being a woman out here? Um, 100%. I've been r and Yeah, that's why I remember her. At gunpoint, and all these. I've been held hostage three times. And in Baltimore, we meet with a man named Nick, an addiction specialist who literally I spends this days too. walking into abandoned buildings, looking for people struggling with addiction to invite into treatment and recovery. Let's talk to him and get his perspective on the matter. No. What's the odds in staying clean for 30 days and what's the odds that they are able to get out of the hole that they're in? I hit up like 300 some people. I'll probably get two to three people that actually go up off the streets into treatment. Wow. Um, some people will go in for a day or two, you know, get antsy, leave. Some people will be in there 30 days, three months, six months, nine months. You can watch the whole spirit and being changed. You know what I'm saying? It's like watching somebody go from being like a uh, caterpie to butterfree. You know what uh, I'm saying? Like the Pokemon. Yeah. yeah so. <laughs> For the next part of the journey, we head to San Francisco. And there's something different about San Francisco when we are there. Usually it is a complete madhouse and it still is to an extent, but it was cleaned up because the week we went there was the week of APEC, which is the week that Asian leaders come to the table and talk business. In particular, Xi Jinping of China. And I think it's interesting that he has seen a cleaned up version of San Francisco, given that it's his Chinese export of fentanyl that's really wreaking havoc on the city. Let's check out San Francisco. <laughs> drug global leaders from 21 member economies. It's San Francisco's biggest international event in decades.
How you doing? Tommy. Welcome to San Francisco, brother. Thank you. Our area right here in Soma and the Tenderloin really has not changed too much at all, besides the tents being removed. That really, the, the tents Did were the only thing. this street used to be covered in tents? This, this side of the street over there was covered with tents. I just wow. think that a lot of it has to do with these nonprofits that are making money off of the homeless individuals. So instead of trying to fix the problem by getting them the substance abuse counseling that they need, they are actually enabling it to manage the problem Problem so they can keep collecting their, their money. This individual right here uh, is just asleep, uh, knotted out on fentanyl most likely. A lot of these black bags that these individuals are carrying around, those black undiscreet bags, come from this place called the Harm Reduction, the Needle Exchange down on 6th Street. I'll show you guys. They give out a lot of utensils and paraphernalia to drug addicts that are struggling. It doesn't really help them. It's actually enabling them and keeping them in this cycle of using. One thing we came to learn was that Whoa. nonprofits in cities like San Francisco are handing out pipes, tinfoil, basically the entire kit you need to smoke fentanyl minus the fentanyl itself. And the question is, is that a good use of our tax dollar? Is that an appropriate solution to this problem? If you went in there right now without the cameras, you could get whatever supplies you want. You I should try that. And pipes. You can for free. What is that like trying to run a business around here? My business is adapted. I mean, as you saw, we don't let people in the store. It was a COVID precaution. So pushing people towards the front was a COVID thing. As we've adapted, it turns out to be a really effective way to keep people outside. So there's not a lot of theft. Now my store has been burglarized. That doesn't keep you protected from being burglarized. Today, obviously, it's a nice so clear day, with? right? So there's been a lot of impact with Apex. And my curiosity mainly lies with the city's inability to keep it clean for any long period of time. Do you think taxpayer money that's giving out free pipes or free- yeah, the niggas get the whole starter pack. God damn. They get the whole starter pack. Are they supposed to not use it? They're just gonna look at it? Come on, bro. Free foils is enabling or helping? It's ineffective, yeah, it doesn't work. I think I'm past the point of anger, I, it's sad. You know, you have so many fentanyl poisonings. Somebody is taking a pill. They think it's um, Percocet. They think it's Vicodin. They think it's Xanax or something like that. You think that's from a, a mission or a shelter? Correct. Yeah, that's from... So someone yeah. left their food on the ground. Correct. They'll get a couple... Favorite part-time streamer and Grim Reaper of ATL. All right, bro. Trays and then they just don't even want to eat it. I know three people that have been poisoned by fentanyl where they were either doing coke or they thought they were doing Percocets she and it actually laced. had fentanyl in it and killed them. It has gotten killed them? looking uh, just very debilitated. My first reaction to seeing needles and pipes being handed out to people that are struggling with addiction by the nonprofits made me angry, but then I considered it from their point of view. According to San Francisco paper, the City Journal, in 2018, San Francisco's Department of Health distributed 4.5 million needles to the Ew! city's 22,000 drug users. Initially, I found it shocking that nonprofits would provide drug users with the tools to do the job. However, these harm reduction facilities play a large role in minimizing the side effects that come with illicit drug use, especially with bloodborne illnesses like HIV and AIDS. A facility called Insight in Vancouver, Canada is one example of this. A 2011 study by the University of British Columbia found that this facility led to a 35% decrease in overdose deaths. One way to think about these harm reduction centers is similar to free condoms that many colleges provide on campus. You know the students are going to have sex, so you might as well stop them from unintended pregnancies. These nonprofits are using the same philosophy with the drug users. You know they're going to do it, you might as well make it clean and stop the spread of disease. Food for thought. Back to the video. Hey, fellas, is there a harm reduction site up here? They give the needles and the, the temple right on 6th Street, right? I've never been to that one. Oh, okay, where do you go? I go to 10th Street, 123 10th Street, and they give you like needles and bubbles. But, but like that tin foil? Yeah, foil, pipes, needles. This type of stuff is littered all over our city. What is that? Uh, what is that? Uh, these are individual cotton balls that they roll up for the addicts so they can draw the drugs up through it and filter it. This is the type of thing that our tax money is going to and it's f***ing despicable, man. But this is it right here, the Harm Reduction Center program was going to be closed November 14th to 17th. Well, you guys just missed it. So when you go into this harm reduction site, uh, do they give you help or do they just give you needles? Yeah, they got needles, they got f***ing, uh... Let me see those. What are those, the easy touch ones? They got needles, they got f***ing pipes and shit. They got, you yeah. know, wipes and shit. They yeah. got things you could need in the canisters. They have hygiene and shit. How helpful is the clean needles to your life? They're very helpful. So we're shooting a documentary. We're just trying to figure out as far as public health are... They don't do, like... No counseling or rehab or nothing like that. They just be providing the needles. 
Jesus. This is one of the most depressing stories. Child. What do you guys try to offer the service? Yo, Queen, thank you for the 20 months. Here. I would refer you to talk to our medical director. The thing that I, can, I find really odd is every time we talk to the people that are getting funded by the taxpayers, no one wants to talk about it at all. No one wants to be the one that says anything on camera. I think that they would like to talk on camera, possibly. But you should have set up and look over there. What you just give her right there? What is that? Pipe? Yeah. Pipe? Yeah. That is absolutely wild that you would enable this individual when they are struggling with addiction that bad, that you'd give them a pipe like that. You guys should be ashamed of yourself. You're not helping the spread of any disease by giving a person a pipe. That is crazy. It is amazing that you would give someone that is conversating with the air right now, you would give them the right materials to get it high again. Yeah. It's that seems unethical in so many ways. Bitch, if you touch my shit up in here, bitch, I'm telling your little ass. You best to get the truck. Who's she pressing right now? You're living a very successful, happy life now, but hey, at one time you were on the streets in the Tenderloin. I was out here on the- <laughs> Nigga that tested her demons. Streets from here, San Jose to Stockton. Now you see one of these guys out here selling drugs, doing drugs. Yeah. So I was a part of this lifestyle for almost 20 years. I went in and out of prison for five times. I couldn't stay out of the street for more than 90 days. Really? Yes. Congratulations, brother. What was the pivot moment where you switched from, hey, I'm gonna be the prison guy and the street guy to, to the be, guy you are now? It was in the cell on the level four yard in 2019 when I literally got transferred and I was kicking off all kinds of drugs and I sat there and started hallucinating in a way where I was seeing myself basically dying, right? And if I continue on the process where I was at, I was gonna die, either OD or get three strikes. And I can literally see my family going to my funeral like, what are they gonna say about me? My whole life up until that point, I was in and out of jail and in prison in my whole f***ing life. A smart man will learn from his mistakes, but a wise man will learn from someone else's mistakes. Yeah. Damn! Hey! Hey, that's a good way to end it. Nah, nigga was speeding! Uh, good video, Tommy G. A little depressing, but it was a good video, though. Oh, so you liked the video. Boom. You, you're gonna like that one, too, man. Go ahead, just... Bro, click the yeah, What that? Bro, that's what I be saying. Like.